I'd like to do a quick example of ray tracing in physics, uh, in particular in geometric optics, just to show a little sense of how you could do calculations in ray tracing uh, with a simple converging lens system. This is uh, the simplest type of ray tracing problem. It's the sort of classic one. Uh, I'm considering here a converging lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters. I've put an object 36 centimeters away from the lens and it has a height of 15 centimeters to begin with. I've labeled the focal points on each side of my converging lens. And let me take a moment to remind you of the essential things in ray tracing. First of all, I've drawn the axis, the central axis of the lens, all the way across. That's an important piece. The second thing that's important in it is having the lens drawn vertically here in the middle. Keep in mind that, in fact, we're assuming in all this ray tracing business, any geometric optics things that are not very complicated, we're assuming that the lens is a thin lens. In particular, even though I've drawn the sort of teardrop shape of a converging lens here, the real calculations we're doing assume the lens is infinitely thin. So that vertical line through the middle, that's what really matters for this calculation. Now what we're going to do for ray tracing, we're going to just follow the three principal rays that come from, we'll take the tip of our object as those three principal rays. And we're just going to follow them as we go. I'll talk you through what the three rays are. These are the same three rays every time in every ray tracing problem. We'll go through it here. The first one is actually very simple. The first one uses the definition of a converging lens. And uh, what it does, we take a ray that goes exactly parallel to the axis of the lens. So I'm going to go parallel to the axis, like so, until I get to the center line of the lens. And then remember what a converging lens does. By definition, a converging lens is one where parallel rays coming in get focused down to the focal point of the lens. That's what it means to be a converging lens. So a ray that comes out from the from the tip of my object in that direction, will then bend, the lens will cause it to bend in such a way that it will pass through that focal point. Let me draw this line. And of course it goes through, but there's nothing actually at the focal point. So this ray just keeps on going indefinitely into the distance. That's principle ray number one. I'll label it as such. Label it, yeah, principle ray number one it's always principal ray number one where you come parallel to the axis and then go through. That's always principal ray number one in ray tracing. Principal ray number two is a really boring ray. Uh, remember, principal ray number two is the one that comes out from the tip of your object or your, whatever point you care about and goes straight through the middle of the lens without bending. Why is that? Well, it's because if you focus in on just the very middle of the lens here, the, along the central axis, if I cover it all up, the sides look flat. The whole point is it looks flat on the sides. It looks like a pane of glass, and a very thin pane of glass doesn't do anything to the direction of your rays. So for that one, any ray that goes straight through the center, again, I'm going to just line it up from my initial point up on top, woo, from my initial point up on top, and I'm going to let this ray pass through the center, do my best to follow this. Woo, okay. Drawing is always hard. Try not to let this move too much as I go. And of course, this goes on forever and ever. But there we can see it's just intersected that. Now, in principle, two rays are enough to find the location. We know, deep in our hearts, we know that in fact, every point of every object that's illuminated somehow is sending out light rays in geometric optics in that approximation, sending those rays in every which direction. And so any, do, any rays we follow should, go, should follow this way. We know this is supposed to come to a point, and indeed it did. I always like to draw the third principal ray as well as a confirmation that I, what I'm doing is making sense. So principal ray number one was parallel to the axis, and then, by the definition of a converging lens, focused down to the focal point, uh, passing down through the focal point and on forever. Principal ray number two went straight through the middle and on forever. Principal ray number three, then, is basically principal, oh, I, I should be labeling these. Here is ray two. Principal ray number three is one that 
is a little bit weirder. Everyone struggles more with Ray 3. The idea is we're basically running Ray 1 backward. We're saying, okay, imagine that we were going from the other side, that we had a ray coming parallel to the axis on this side that reaches my thin lens. And for a converging lens, all parallel rays will all pass through the focal point and then on through the other way and then spread back out. The question is, what ray coming parallel on the side would get bent, go through the focal point, and go exactly through my object point? Now really, the light's not going to go that direction. The light goes the other direction. But that's the way that we're going to do this. We're going to use the fact that any ray that passes through the focal point on one side and then hits the lens will come out parallel on the other side. So here's principle ray number three. We start out, again, same starting point. That's the whole, I, the whole purpose of this, is to have the same starting point for all of these. And for principle ray number three, I follow this along here, go through the nearby focal point, and uh-oh. Now this is the point where a lot of people get, con get concerned. It's not uncommon for one or two of the rays, principal rays, to miss your pretty little picture of the lens in the middle. This ray has gone below my picture of the lens. Now we know in real life, any ray of light that doesn't hit the lens, of course, it keeps going forever. The only place in this picture where light rays can bend in any way is at the line in the middle of the lens. That's the only place we're allowed to bend. Anywhere else the ray has to be in a straight line. You better not have this thing bend anywhere else because only the lens can bend the ray. Now the principal ray diagrams, this ray tracing stuff, we're allowed to be sneaky. We know that if our lens was infinitely tall, all the rays would hit it. And we know that in that case, the three principal rays would all meet at the image point. So we're allowed to pretend that this lens is as tall as we need it to be. We're allowed to pretend that this lens is as long as we need it to be to bend this principal ray around. We know now again in actuality the principal ray would miss the this ray of light would miss the lens and wouldn't end up over there. But for the principal rays for ray tracing, just for the mathematics of it, for the being able, to, being able to draw the picture, we can approximate it as if this works. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take this. Remember. Any ray that passes through the focal, ray, focal point on one side, when it reaches the lens, goes out parallel on the other side, parallel to the axis of the lens. And so I can draw that like so. I will try to keep this upright. Try to keep it flat, pretty close. We'll find out. All right, and I have here my third principal ray. This is principal ray number three. And again, the essential thing is it passed through this focal point and because it was passing through in that direction, it comes out parallel to the axis on the other side. That means all these rays have come together. Well, they haven't quite, have they? These rays have come awfully close to coming together at a single point. This is why I like three rays. It means drawing all three rays. It means that I get a sort of double check on my results. Essentially, I'm just going to sort of take the middle of these rays somewhere there and say here is my image that I get. This is my image and it has some height of its own. Uh, in fact, let me measure some of the, some of the uh, features of this image. I can measure its height. Looks like it comes out to be 19 and a half is what I'm getting here. 19.5 centimeters. Now, I don't really trust that 0.5. This is a fuzzy enough thing here. That 0.5 is kind of iffy, but I don't know which way I'd round it. So maybe 19.5 plus or minus 0.5 centimeters, or maybe even plus or minus 1. I don't know. It, it's kind of rough. But anyway, about 19.5 centimeters high. And I guess I should also measure how far away from the lens it showed up. Again, measure from the central line of the lens, because everything else is just a pretty picture. The central line is the approximation we're using of a thin lens. So I'm going to measure this. When I measure across, I get this at 44, just over 44 centimeters. So my S prime, in our book's notation, S prime is 44 centimeters. And I don't know, I, there's obviously some uncertainty there. I'm not going to be really really careful about how I talk about this, maybe plus or minus one centimeter if I want to be really careful about my uncertainties. I'm not, I'm not worrying about that too much right now. 
So that's what I've got. The idea, of course, of course, is that these are not the only rays that we're passing along here. We know, it, deep in our hearts, that there are rays coming out in all sorts of different directions from this point. And each one of them, the, the idea of this converging lens is that each one of these will end up passing through passing through that same point. It's just we don't know how to draw any of the others. There are these three special principal rays that we know how to draw, one, two, and three, that we can come together and find the place that, that they meet. We know, of course, that there are infinitely many rays in all different directions coming out here in geometric optics, but it's just those three special ones that we can follow in a well-defined way and find where they meet. Now, and here we are, we have this image. I guess I should also say that the image is inverted. It's upside down. And the other thing to say about it is that because the rays really pass through this point, all these rays really pass through this point, this is a real image because the rays were really there. A again, remember, essentially, our eye is somewhere over here looking over and observing things. And when our eye is looking at this, as far as our eye is concerned, the rays are spreading out from this point not from this point at all. Our eye will only be aware of the things coming, rays coming from this point, upside down. And so this is the image point that our eye will see. Having done that, let's do a quick little double check of this using the thin lens equation, uh, just to see how this comes out. Now, I love ray tracing. Ray tracing is a great way of understanding what's going on in a ray system, in, in a system of rays this way. Uh, what I want to do uh, having done this, I, I like to check that with uh, numerically using the thin lens equation. So let's do that. We know the thin lens equation says 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance equals 1 over the focal length of the lens. Or uh, in our case, we're looking for the image distance. Uh, we can say that 1 over s prime equals 1 over f minus 1 over s. Or, well, let's go through this. 1 over f, f is 20 centimeters, so that's 1 over 20 centimeters, minus 1 over 36 centimeters. I've got those pieces. Um, and this is something where we could, uh, we could do all sorts of things, doing different calculations. Let's see what we've got. 1 over 20 minus 1 over 36. If I wanted to go to some kind of least common multiple of these things, I think I would have, uh, sorry, putting on, not least common multiple, yeah, least common multiple to put over a common denominator. Uh, what will that get me? Probably something like 180. I think 180 is what I need. Yeah, so multiply this one by 18 and this one by uh, 5. Is that right? No, not by 18. 180, uh, 9. 9 and 5. Yeah, so 1 over 20 is 9 over 180 centimeters minus this by 5, 5 over 180 centimeters comes out to be 4 over 180 centimeters. That looks like something I should be able to simplify. 180 divided by 4 is going to be 90 divided by 2 or 1 over 45 centimeters. So in other words, S prime should be 45 centimeters. That's the exact numerical result. And I trust the numbers better for from the thin lens equation. You can see I measured 44, or a little more than, I guess I measured a little over 44. And so this is pretty darn close. For the heights, if I want to compare heights using the equations instead of just the ray tracing, I can check my answer there by recalling that H prime over H equals minus s prime over s, where s prime is this, my 45 centimeters, that's minus 45 centimeters over my s was 36 centimeters. And hey, that's 9 times 5, that's 9 times 4, that's 5 fourths, minus 5 fourths. The minus sign that shows up here tells me that this is inverted, so that agrees with my upside downness over there. Upside downness is a technical term. Uh, and then 5 fourths. What is 5 fourths of 15? 5 fourths of 16 
So let's see, 1.25 times 15, uh, 5 fourths of 16 would be 20. So a little less than 20? And hey, a little less than 20 centimeters it is. So it looks like my ray tracing here has worked out really well. It agreed my results considered, uh, my results uh, using the numerical thin lens equations and things agree very well with my ray tracing. I like the ray tracing better. Even though the equations all plug through nice and neat, I like the ray tracing because it gives me a really clear picture of how you do, of how you find that image position, how you find that, what's going on with the rays. It shows me what's happening. The equations are just these dry, empty things. The pictures are where it's all about. Physics for me is a very much a pictures thing, and geometric optics is a classic example of pictures where the ray tracing tells us exactly what's going on. So with that, that's how you can do ray tracing in this simplest case of a real image coming, up, coming from an object that's beyond the focal point on a converging lens. That's the end of that.